Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'll get right to it. Boris FX, the leading software developer who made its mark winning Academy and Emmy Awards in the feature film and television industries for their special effects software, contacted me to give a road test to their Photoshop plugin called Optics. Here's the deal. It blew my mind. It's without a doubt the best third-party plugin in Photoshop that I've ever used. Optics is a true game changer for digital photography and for that reason I accepted their sponsorship of this video. So what is Optics? Optics is a Photoshop plugin that contains 160 stunning visual effects with thousands of customizable presets. It's also available for Lightroom and as a standalone application for Windows and Mac OS. Before I show you two examples of how easy it is to transform this daytime photo into a dramatic nighttime scene, as well as how I created a 1940s film noir style portrait, I want to give you a quick overview of this powerhouse plugin. If you do decide you'd like to add optics to Photoshop, receive 15% off by clicking the special link in my video's description. Optics features 75 sapphire filters, which is used by top visual effects artists on the world's most famous television shows and films. The Optics Light category contains over 30 different filters and features sapphire lens flares widely used in some of Hollywood's biggest films. Want to create J.J. Abrams or Marvel star lens flares in Photoshop? They're here in Optics. Create stunningly beautiful and realistic lens flares, subtle soft glows, and all at the highest possible quality. Optics also includes social media ready light leaks, rays, auroras, and sapphire soft gorgeous glows. Explore the render filters to add realistic night skies and clouds to your backgrounds. Within Optics atmospheric effects, you can deliver phases of the moon, and add realistic lightning flashes to your stormy skies. I'll show you how I'll transform this daytime photo into a gorgeous nighttime scene using just the Optics plugin. Before you open Optics, always convert your image into a smart object so we can modify the original photo non-destructively. Go to Filter, Boris Effects, and Optics. It'll immediately open the Optics interface. At the bottom is the array of categories of plugins. By clicking on each one, you'll see the various presets within that category. To the left are your layers, which you can reorder, hide, or remove. The bottom layer is always your original photo. For this image, I'll first use the Stylize category because that's where I'll find the Day for Night filters. I'll click the Day for Night 6. Immediately, you'll see your image updated in the preview window. All the presets and optics are fully customizable. Just click the Parameters tab to open all of your controls for this preset. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the blur, so I'll drag the blur slider all the way to zero. I'd like to make the highlights a bit darker, so I'll drag the Preserve Highlight slider to the left. I'll add another layer by clicking this icon. The new layer retains all the effects we've added to our photo. I'd like to add a lens flare at the top of the lighthouse. I'll click the Light Category tab, which shows all the effects within this category. I'll click the S Lens Flare. The first preset appears on our image. Before I choose the lens flare I want to use, I'll move it into position by dragging the center of it. We can also reposition the secondary flares independently of the main flare by dragging this icon. There are 128 different lens flares from which to choose. I'll choose Apollo Govada and open its parameters to modify it. I'll make it smaller so it's easier to center it to its exact position. Then I'll increase its size again and adjust its brightness. We can adjust the characteristics of the rays as well. I'll adjust its brightness and the number of rays emanating out. 
If you want to reset the setting amounts you had before you drag the slider, just press Ctrl or Command Z on your keyboard. We can adjust the ray's length and its thickness. I'll tweak the ray's brightness as well as the hotspot's brightness. Under Other are the adjustments for the secondary flares. Next, I'll add a moon, so I'll create a new layer and click the Render category. I'll click S Luna and click Full Moon. I'll open its parameters, reduce its size, and move it. If you want to hide the guidelines, just uncheck them in the parameters. We can adjust the moon's lunar phases if we want. I'll reduce its contrast and increase the glow's brightness. I'll create a halo around the moon by increasing its brightness, increasing the size of the halo, and adjusting its inner and outer softness. I'll finesse some of the settings until I like the result. To compare the before and after, Click this icon. White triangles will appear at the top and bottom. Drag either of them across or up and down to reveal the photo. We could also click this icon to see our finished image on top of the original. To save it, click this icon. It's all saved as a smart filter in the Layers panel, just like any other smart filter. In the next example, I'll show you how I transform this photo into a classic film noir portrait using only the Optics plugin. As before, I'll convert the photo into a smart object and go to Filter, Boris Effects, and Optics. Optics remembers everything we used the last time, so it applied it to this new photo. All we have to do to start from scratch is to just click this icon. I'll open the Light category and click Light. I already chose Shutters 10 earlier, so I'll click its parameters and drag the Displacement slider over. And just like that, it automatically wraps the entire light around my entire image. I want the displacement to show just over my subject and not the background. So, I'll create a mask around my subject to hide the displacement over the background. To do this, I'll click this icon and click Easy Mask. It places a mask next to the top layer. I'll drag the Easy Mask tool roughly along the inside edge of my subject, which tells Easy Mask that everything inside this green line will show through the mask. Then, I'll click this icon, which represents the areas I want to mask out. I'll draw the tool roughly along the outside edge of my subject. I'll fill those areas in by clicking the Paint Bucket tool and clicking on either side of the red lines. To fill in my subject, I'll click this icon, which represents the area I want the mask to show through. I'll click the Paint Bucket tool again and click on my subject to fill it in. To process the mask, click this icon. Immediately, it created a detailed mask next to my subject. I'll create a new layer and drag a copy of the layer mask next to the top image. I'll make the bottom layer mask active and click this icon to invert it. So basically, the layer with the inverted mask just shows my background and the top layer just shows my subject. I'll make the top image active and drag the lower image onto the top image, which adds the shutter lights to my subject. I'll open its parameters and scale it up because in real life, my subject would be closer to the shutter blinds than the background. It's a bit too bright, so I'll decrease its brightness. I want to blur the lights on the background, so I'll make that layer active and blur it. I'll also decrease its brightness and increase its scale a bit. Lastly, I'll make my entire image black and white. I'll make a new layer 
Click the Color Category tab and click the black and white filter. For this image, I'll click the green preset because I like the look of the contrast on my subject. I'll open its parameters and drag its brightness down a bit. I think I'd like to add a subtle light halo into my image as well as film grain, so I'll make a new layer, open the Film Lab category, and click the Looks preset. I'll click Halo and open its parameters. I'll enable the grain and check Monochrome, which softens it a bit. I'll adjust its Gamma, Brightness, and Contrast until I get the look I want, and then I'll save it to my Photoshop document. I hope this overview of optics gives you an insight into how this plugin is such a game changer. As I mentioned at the beginning, take advantage of the 15% discount that Boris FX is offering to my viewers. Click the special link in my video's description and use the special code BLTV2020. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.